opportunities in the in the regional triangle. Uh, attractive licenses probably aren't there anymore. Where they can where operators can get strong revenue growth as well as subscription growth. Um, there's some opportunities maybe in the middle of the Middle East, say Syria, um, Lebanon, and so on. But how much revenue growth from there, subscription growth? It's not going to be as attractive maybe as the Gulf markets we had with Saudi Arabia and so on, where there's a clear-cut opportunity to get growth. Um, so what next for, the oper for these operators and investors? Recently, we saw QTEL of Qatar um, acquire a 51% stake in NMTC, also known as Watania of Kuwait. That could be a way to go. It's a strategic link-up. You, you buy a stake in an already present investor, and you've got a foothold in many markets in the region. Um, if that's something that we're going to continue to see, I'm, I doubt. I can't see if the Salah buying a stake in MTC or vice versa. So I think there's a few licenses left, small ones once liberalization procedures are put in place in Lebanon, for example. But they're not as attractive as the ones that we've seen. That's why the prices were so high for Egypt and Saudi Arabia, because they were seen as the last big opportunities in our little region here. So where next, the opportunity could be just across the water in the Asia Pacific. Um, recently, we've seen some deals in this regard. Um, QTEL buying 25% of Asia Mobile Holdings in, um, in Singapore. Um, which gives them a, a foothold in Indonesia, India, big markets. Uh, um, STC of Saudi Arabia made its first foray out of, out of the region, out of anywhere, to be honest, in buying a stake in Maxis of Malaysia. Again, a foothold in the Asia-Pacific region. I think that's the way to go. It's where penetration rates are low, populations are high, and also w the Gulf countries have got a long history of migrant workers from these countries actually living in their countries. The majority of the UAE is expat. And the majority of those are from the subcontinent of Asia, basically. So um, there's a cultural business and just, oh, the, you know, there's, there's this link there between the two continents, between the two regions, sorry. And um, that in itself is an incentive, you know. Um, Africa also represents an opportunity. We've already got a history of Gulf operators setting up their MTC with its Celtel stake and it has a lot of its Atlantic stake. Um, there's countries there which have you know, a lot of room for growth, but um, how, if that's going to be actually fulfilled as an issue, um, there still remains a few countries which can be targeted. But most of them have gone really through these big consolidation activities by MTC, the Salat, MTN. Um, so it's maybe a case of getting organic growth in these countries through borderless roaming, for, exa for example, the MTC, no borders roaming um, strategy that they put in place for their cell tower network. Um, incomes are very low as well, so the strategy is based around that. So um, it's, an op it's an interesting market. Uh, there's still opportunities, but maybe not as m many as we saw at the time of the cell tower and Atlantic deals. Another facet of saturated markets has been that in Europe, for example, as saturation set in, operators looked at new technologies to get new revenue growth. So the Gulf has embraced that somewhat. UAE was, and Bahrain were the first to launch 3G in the region. Um, but surprisingly enough, Saudi Arabia has been the fastest growing and it's only been in operation since June 06 compared to UAE in January 04. So um, at the end of June, Saudi Arabia had 2.2 million subscriptions compared to 1.1 in the UAE. Obviously, there's more people in Saudi Arabia and there's more pent-up demand. But um, 3G maybe represents an avenue for, for incremental revenue growth. When your markets are saturated, you need to look for, new, for these new avenues. So there's a chance there. Saudi Arabia has shown that it can actually work if you get the content right, if you get the ability to actually have the SIM card 3G enabled right. Um, of course, Saudi Arabia has the other advantage of very low internet penetration. I think the last number we heard was below 1% penetration. So the market, the demand's there just for broadband, let's say. So if operators in Saudi Arabia can take advantage of HSDPA to provide mobile broadband, they've got a good chance there to 
increase their revenues and so on. I think that's the way that they can go. Saudi Arabia, for instance, is very mountainous and putting down copper wires or op fiber optic cables is not as easy as doing it over the air. So operators like Mobile and so STC can use that as an avenue. Um, it's, it, there's, a, there's an opportunity there with 3G, but um, I think it's more reserved for the richer Gulf countries. I think countries like Syria, um, Jordan, these middle-income countries haven't been as fast to embrace it, and they're playing a wait-and-see game because a lot of money has to be pumped into these networks, and then they have to see how much money is actually going to be made. Whilst the Gulf countries have a bit more disposable income to do these things and are willing to experiment more. So I think there's an opportunity there, but mainly in the Gulf.